Have you ever wondered why we dream? What purpose do these nightly imaginings serve? Dreams are a universal phenomenon experienced by everyone, everywhere, and yet they are as diverse as the people who dream them. Some are filled with joy and wonder, others with fear and uncertainty. Some dreams are so vivid they could be mistaken for reality, while others are as elusive as smoke. Throughout history, dreams have been shrouded in mystery and fascination, perplexing philosophers and scientists alike. They've been viewed as divine messages, reflections of our deepest desires, and even gateways to alternate realities. Despite centuries of exploration and study, the true nature of dreams continues to elude us. Scientists have offered a host of theories in an attempt to explain this enigma. These theories range from psychological interpretations to neurobiological explanations. But do any of them hold the key to understanding why we dream? Join us as we delve into the scientific theories that attempt to explain why we dream. Dreams, as it turns out, primarily occur during a particular stage of sleep known as REM. This stage, named for the rapid eye movements that are its hallmark, is a unique phase of sleep, quite distinct from the non-REM stages. In the realm of sleep, REM is like a bustling city that never sleeps. It's a period of heightened brain activity with brain waves similar to those when we're awake. It's as if, while our bodies are at rest, our minds are hosting a midnight carnival, brimming with energy and activity. But what makes the REM stage so special? Well, it's during this stage that some of the most fascinating phenomena of sleep occur. These include increased heart rate and blood pressure, and most notably, dreams. Yes, those strange, often bewildering narratives that play out in our sleep primarily occur during the REM stage. Now you might be wondering, how do we know this? Well, scientists have observed that people woken during REM sleep often report vivid dreams. In contrast, those woken during non-REM stages usually recall fragmented thoughts, but not the complex story-like sequences we associate with dreams. But let's delve a little deeper into the nature of REM sleep. Interestingly, our first REM period of the night is typically quite short, only about 10 minutes. But as the night progresses, these REM periods get longer, with the final one lasting up to an hour. And it's during these later, longer REM stages that our most vivid dreams occur. Moreover, it's worth noting that while adults spend about one-fifth of their sleep in REM, infants spend nearly half of their sleep in this active stage. This finding has led some researchers to speculate that REM sleep and, and by extension dreaming might play a role in brain development. So REM sleep is when dreams predominantly occur, but why do we dream? Let's explore some theories. One of the oldest theories about dreams comes from the field of psychoanalysis, pioneered by Sigmund Freud. Freud was a man of his time, living in an era where the human mind was viewed as a profound mystery. He believed dreams were the royal road to the unconscious, a pathway to our deepest, often repressed desires and fears. Freud's psychoanalytic theory of dreams revolves around two key concepts, manifest content and latent content. The manifest content is the actual storyline of the dream, the images and scenarios we remember upon waking. It's like the cover of a book, an intriguing surface that hides a deeper story. Now, let's delve beneath the surface to the latent content. This is the symbolic meaning of the dream, the repressed desires and unresolved issues from our waking life. Freud suggested that our dreams are a safe space where these repressed desires 
can play out without the constraints of societal norms and expectations. But Freud's theory is not without its critics. Many argue that his emphasis on repressed sexual desires is outdated and overly simplistic. Furthermore, his theory is difficult to test scientifically due to the subjective nature of dream interpretation. Additionally, Freud's theory doesn't account for why we dream about mundane activities or why some dreams seem to have no discernible meaning at all. It also struggles to explain why we sometimes dream about things we have never experienced in our waking life. Despite these limitations, Freud's theory has had a lasting impact on our understanding of dreams. It has sparked a curiosity that has driven countless researchers to explore the enigmatic world of dreams. It's the first theory to suggest that our dreams might be more than just random images, but a reflection of our inner psyche. While intriguing, Freud's theory is just one of many. Another perspective comes from modern neuroscience. Um, neuroscientists propose a different explanation, the information processing theory. Imagine your brain as an incredibly busy office with countless papers to file. During the day, it's swamped with incoming data and doesn't have the time to sort through it all. But at night, when the hustle and bustle calms down, it gets to work. This essentially is the premise of the information processing theory. The theory suggests that dreams are the brain's way of processing and consolidating the day's information. It's like the brain is running a nightly backup of all the day's events, thoughts, and emotions. The dream state provides a unique environment where the brain can sort, categorize, and store all this data in your long-term memory. Supporting this theory, studies have shown that people who learn new skills or information and then dream about it are more likely to retain that information. For instance, if you spent the day learning a new language and dreamt about it at night, you might wake up with a better grasp of the language. But just like any theory, the information processing theory has its limitations. One major drawback is that it doesn't entirely explain why we often dream about things unrelated to our daily experiences. We all know that feeling of waking up from a dream about flying dragons or living in a pineapple under the sea. These dreams don't seem to have any direct connection to our waking life, which leaves a gap in the theory. Furthermore, this theory struggles to explain the emotional intensity and bizarre nature of many dreams. Why would a simple information processing task result in such vivid and often emotionally charged dream scenarios? Yet, despite these limitations, the information processing theory provides a compelling perspective on the purpose of dreams. It suggests that dreams are not just random firing of neurons, but a meaningful process that aids in memory consolidation and learning. So dreams could be our brain's way of sorting through daily experiences. But there's another theory that suggests a more primal function of dreams. Um, the threat simulation theory posits that dreaming is an ancient defense mechanism. This intriguing theory suggests that dreams are not mere whimsical flights of the subconscious, but rather a primal survival tool honed by millions of years of evolution. Picture this, our ancestors living in a world fraught with danger and uncertainty. Every rustle in the bushes, every snap of a twig could spell life or death. According to the threat simulation theory, dreaming was a way for our ancestors to rehearse these potential threats during the safety of sleep to better prepare themselves for real life situations. This theory has its roots in the evolutionary perspective, which views all aspects of human behavior and psychology as 
products of evolution. It suggests that those early humans who could simulate and thus anticipate threats in their dreams were more likely to survive, passing on this beneficial trait to future generations. In essence, your dreams of being chased, of facing danger, or struggling with adversity might be echoes of our ancestral past. A nightly survival course that hones your brain's reaction to threats. But is there any evidence to support this theory? Interestingly, studies have shown that dream content often includes elements of threat or danger. Moreover, children and people living in conflict zones who are arguably more exposed to threats tend to have more intense and more frequent threat-related dreams. However, like all theories, the threat simulation theory isn't without its critics. Some argue that the prevalence of threat in dreams could be a reflection of modern anxieties rather than ancient survival mechanisms. Others point out that many dreams don't involve threats at all, raising questions about the theory's comprehensive applicability. Even so, the threat simulation theory offers a fascinating perspective on why we dream. It underscores the potential purpose and power of our nocturnal narratives, reminding us that dreams might be more than just random firings of the brain. So, whether it's sorting through our thoughts, fulfilling repressed wishes, or preparing us for danger, it's clear that dreams serve important functions. In the end, the question of why we dream remains one of the great mysteries of science. As we journeyed through the enigma of dreams, um, we've examined the RM stage, delved into the depths of the psychoanalytic theory, navigated the waters of the information processing theory, and braved the threat simulation theory. Each theory, a unique perspective, a different lens through which to view our nightly escapades. Yet, for all our understanding, dreams continue to bewilder and fascinate us. They remain a grand spectacle of the mind, a nightly theater of thoughts and emotions. The ongoing research in this field is as captivating as the dreams themselves, hinting at the potential for future discoveries that could change the way we perceive our subconscious reality. As we continue to dream, scientists will continue to explore this fascinating phenomenon, inching us closer to understanding the enigma of our nightly journeys. The exploration continues, and with it, the hope that one day, the mystery of dreams will unravel.